Let us discuss the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta variants and COVID-19. All of you would know the structure of the SARS-CoV-2 virus with the spike protein on the surface and the other proteins that are present in the virus. This is a schematic diagram of the spike protein to show you the important receptor binding domain, a very, very important area of the spike protein, because that is the one that binds to the cell, the virus enters the cell, it multiplies, and then it spreads from cell to cell and from person to person. So viruses, whilst they are multiplying, can change, and those are mutations, the genes, the genetic changes can occur, mutation, and a lot of the mutations have no significant effect. However, some of the mutations can be relevant and have some important clinical effects. So we know that RNA viruses mutate more than DNA viruses. There are some RNA viruses like influenza that mutate far more than the SARS, than coronaviruses. And what are the potential effects of these viral mutations? There are five effects we must consider. Effects on the spread or transmission, more severe disease, effect in diagnostic tests, therapeutic agents, that is the agents we use to treat, and does it have an effect on the vaccine responses? So they, those are the five that we look at when you have a variant to see if it is significant, et cetera. So the variants have been classified as variants of concern, variants of interest, and finally, variants of high consequence. We don't have any variants of high consequence, but there are a number of variants of concern in the UK, US, in Europe, and the rest of the world, and called WHO, and variants of interest. Now, I've given you certain numbers there, and the places that they originated, et cetera, and we have been calling those, but there has been a change in nomenclature. That is what I'm trying to discuss at the, in the present talk with regards to the variants of concern and variants of interest. So when is it called a variant of concern? If it has an effect on those five different things that I mentioned, the initial it's called variant of interest, and then it will be upgraded to variant of concern based on the five characteristics that are assessed. So very recently, the WHO came with a new nomenclature for naming the variants because it was causing a lot of confusion with numbers or the place it originated like the UK variant etc. So now it is the variants of concern are called alpha, beta, gamma or delta. Alpha is for the UK original UK variant, beta is for the South African variant, gamma is for the Brazilian P1 and delta is for the one of the Indian variants that is the sub-variant 2 of the Indian variant. And then you had the variants of interest, which are also named and with using the Greek uh, uh, letters of the Greek alphabet as given in the slide there. So the important variants are alpha, beta, of variants of concern are alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And I've told you what it refers to. The UK, though those originated initially in the UK, South Africa, Brazil, and India, and some of the sub-variants. So people were asked, do you think this system is the best system? They had thought of different, different names, names of places, et cetera. And uh, a lot of people think that this may work and may be easier for people to understand as opposed to the previous numbers, et cetera, which was confusing a lot of people. So if you look at the alpha variant, the originally called the UK variant, you can see a lot of mutations are present in the spike protein gene plus other parts, other genes in the virus. So that is important. What did it do? It increased transmissibility, caused more severe disease, but generally vaccines were effective. I've discussed the Delta variant previously with you, originally in the original called Indian variant, and there are a number of mutations, including two important mutations in the receptor binding domain, as shown in the figure given there. And the important mutation in the receptor binding domain is the E484Q and the L452R, and that was why it was originally called the double variant or the double mutation variant, and that is the Indian variant, also called Delta variant now. So the Delta variant has two subgroup, uh, three subgroups, uh, sub uh, lineages. That is the, uh, the sorry, the Indian variant has three sub uh, lineages, one, two, and three, and the one is called the, the Kappa variant, and the number two is called the Delta variant. 
So an important thing is that the Delta variant is more transmissible. And this is shown clearly in the UK, where the transmission is supposed to be 60% higher than the UK variant. And the important aspect of that is, previously I've spoken about herd immunity, et cetera, and about 67% people getting immunity. But if the transmissibility is high, the R not increases, then you find that a higher number of people would need to be immunized and immune to get this herd immunity threshold, et cetera, which I've discussed before. So let us look at the variants of concern. We have to remember that the Los Angeles variant, originally called Los Angeles, now called the Epsilon variant, is listed as a variant of concern in the US, but not in the UK. So you have the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and I'll come to the Delta later on. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, consider those. The, uh, the origin, it is Alpha is 50% more transmissible. It's more likely to cause more severe disease and vaccines are still effective. When it comes to the beta variant, 50% more transmissible, it is unknown if it causes a more severe disease, but vaccines are less effective. And that has to be remembered, it's less effective. The gamma variant believed to be more transmissible, but more data is needed. It's unknown if it causes a more severe disease. And finally, the vaccine efficacy is uncertain at the moment because still more studies are needed. So this is a table showing the COVID-19 vaccine efficacy against the different variant. Original, so you have the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna, and the J&J vaccine. 95%, 94%, and 72% efficacy, we know that. When it comes to alpha variant, it is effective. So if you look at the Pfizer vaccine, it is effective against all the all the variants, but we have to remember with the Delta variants, it's, there's about 70, 75% reduction in the antibody levels. And in the Beta variant, it is reduced antibody titers. Similar with the Moderna vaccine and the J&J vaccine, again, there was a reduction in efficacy with the South African variants. And that is an important point to be remembered uh, if it regards to the vaccination and the South African variant. In addition, we must remember that the Delta variant with an increase in transmissibility, there is a drop in antibody neutralization with those uh, with some of the vaccines. So an important message is two vaccine doses are needed for optimal protection. One dose is not sufficient. A recent study by the Public Health uh, England showed that one dose of Pfizer vaccine has a 49.2% protection uh, effectiveness against the alpha variant, and it increases to 93 uh, when two doses are given. Oxford, it was 51 and 66. While the Delta variant, you can see it was very low. One dose was very low in the 30s, and then it increased with the second dose. So the take-home message there is you have to have at least 50% cut off and one dose is not sufficient. Delaying the second dose inordinately would not help. Both doses are needed to get optimal protection as otherwise there will be a false sense of, uh, false sense of uh, relief thinking that the person is protected with one dose. So. In summary, viral variants have been around for the last few months. The nomenclature was confusing because there were numbers or the place that it originally was seen in. The WHO has come and called, used the Greek letters of the Greek alphabet to classify them. The variants of concern in the UK and what WHO has said variants of concern is alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Alpha is the original UK variant, beta is the South African variant, gamma is the Brazilian P1 variant, and delta is the subvariant 2 of the original of the Indian variant. And these are what the names that we will be using in the future discussions, etc. Thank, thanks a lot.